I hear that a lot in my culture, just like any man. It's like, boys are not supposed to cry. Don't cry, son. Of and course. like, you know, I'm not gonna lie. My husband has said that. And I like pop back every time. Like, don't ever tell him that because what you're doing is, is you're creating a pattern now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of relationships out there where they, they're with men that are, they don't communicate. They're not emotional. They don't want to cry. You know, they have to hold all that shit in because it's like, you're a man, you're not supposed to cry. You're a man, you're not supposed to show feeling. But it's like, then you're with your wife or your partner and they're more in their like soft era, soft feeling. Like, how do you coexist with that? You're always going to be at odds. And mm -hmm. it's like sad. Welcome to Guys That Listen. I'm Peter. And today we got a special guest, Amber and LaPod. Amber, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Hey, everybody. My name is Amber Ashley. I am a California realtor. I also own my own business called Lava Designs. I am a mother of two mm. and a wife. Oh, and I'm wow. here today to talk some shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let loose. How old are your kids? My kids are, I have a seven-year-old son who's going to be eight next month. Wow. His name is Ashton. And then I have a 10-year-old daughter oh, that's wow. going to be 11. So I'm I'm about to have a middle schooler. I'm oh, scared. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be the harder ages, right? Up yeah, until high school. Right. Mm, how long have you been married now? It's going to be 10 years oh, wow. in August. And you've always owned a business? No. So like I actually worked in the fashion industry um, prior to me starting my business and becoming a realtor. Um, I was the director of technical design and everyone's like, what's tech design? Yeah. Um, can you it's explain? The so there's two types of designers in the fashion industry. There is your fashion designer, people that like sketch, mm. pick the fabrics, basically put a collection together. The technical designer is the person that actually like does all the specifications. So like measuring it, perfecting the fit, um, bring it to mass production. So gotcha. like we fit like on a fit model, make corrections, and then we're like, all right, approved to production. And then we grade it up, like up and down the size scale. Oh, wow. So if you ever like try on clothes and you're like, uh, I can't move my arms or this isn't fit or this is not my size, chances are like, the tech designer was whack oh, yeah. <laughs> or like um, didn't something happen in production. So I'm definitely that's where my expertise lies in the industry. Oh, wow. How long did you, did you do that for? I did that. So I started, oh man, I started in the fashion industry in 2006. Oh, wow. I was part of that like whole streetwear era. Like I worked on Furfax, like I was you know, running around, getting coffee for people. <laughs> really? Um, I started out in the streetwear industry and then kind of worked my way up from there. Oh, nice. And then became director at a denim company out in LA and just decided after a couple of years of doing it that I wanted to be at home and I wanted to be with my kids. Was that yeah. what led you to own your own business? Like your kids, your family? I mean, I would say yes. But I've always been an entrepreneur at heart mm. as, for as long as I can remember, even being a kid. Like I was always talking to myself, <laughs> or like <laughs> pretending I was talking to like an audience uh. or, um, and I also come from an era of like talk shows, like Arsenio Hall, like mm. all those crazy talk, there was a, it was a talk show generation. So like, I wanted to be a talk show host. That's crazy, right? Wow. Like, that's actually my passion. And I was telling you earlier that I'm like nervous or whatnot, but like when I'm like talking to people and in front of a crowd, that's kind of like that energy that you get where you get excited. Mm -hmm. That's how you know that's your passion. Oh, it lights you up. It lights you up. And it's like a staticky feeling. Mm -hmm. You're kind of nervous, but at the same time, it's like exciting. It's like a rush. So if you ever want to know like what your passion is and what you want to do, like when you have those feelings, that's chances are that's what you're meant to do mm. isn't it funny that you said you feel kind of nervous but that thing also lights you up because yeah i think in general when people feel those things it could be perceived in either way right one right. or the other like you're scared or you're excited mm -hmm. but it can actually be a little bit of both yeah but some people choose one or the other right yeah. if they're scared they typically steer away from it because it's uncomfortable it's out of exactly. their comfort zone if they feel it like as if it was exciting, 
And then they lean into it a little bit more. Absolutely. But it's kind of hard to differentiate sometimes. You know, I like to say it like this. It's kind of like you when you have like your first boyfriend, your first crush, and mm -hmm. that excitement of like you're scared, but like, Ooh. you know what I mean? That feeling. It's that feeling of like excitement, but you're nervous and scared because you don't really know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Or you know what it is? It's that like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like a good feeling, but a scary feeling. Yeah, that's actually a really good comparison because as yeah. you're telling me that, I'm, I was imagining... Exactly that. I was so nervous, so scared initially right? with my first girlfriend. And, you know, now I I think after being in a few relationships, I finally feel comfortable with understanding what that feeling is. I'm able to discern if this is like, why Why am I nervous around this person? Right, right. You know what I mean? Why, why do I feel like my words can't come out as naturally yeah. as they usually do? Let me ask you something about that. When did mm -hmm. you, like, how old were you? when you discovered to like when you were aware of like why am i like this or why do i clam up or why am i nervous like how old were you i think the first time i felt it i wouldn't say i dove into it meaning i didn't really fully understand why but i do remember the feeling and i think i was in kindergarten or something yeah, and i had a crush on this Aww. girl but i didn't know what it was i was just like why do i care to be around her so much exactly. you know and i never said anything i actually didn't go into really talking to people that i was into until right. in my teens yeah. and that was more so because my hand was forced you know uh mm -hmm. you know when you're teenagers <laughs> like oh this girl likes you yeah. you should go talk to yeah. her you know and uh that's when i started realizing when i didn't like someone yeah and when i did because the people that were super easy to just go talk to. Yeah. I was like, oh, I, I don't think I like this person that much. I, I didn't really care. You know, there was none of that nervousness, no butterflies. And exactly. as a teenager, that's like really hard to hold back. You yeah. Know? And I feel like that's with everything, even like at this point in my life. I'm 38 right now. But mm. I feel like as a kid, it's like you don't really know too much. All the feelings are like raw and yes. real you know there's no like parents telling you how to feel or there's no it's so innocent mm. those are the best feelings that's why like your childhood i feel like is an important thing it's a big thing in your life it's when you like probably had your first heartbreak or you know had this feeling of excitement right so yeah. that's crazy that you said that that's so interesting because this is coming from your perspective as a mother yeah so you've already dealt with it in your own life as your childhood yeah. and then now you're going to deal with it within your daughter's childhood yeah. and your son's childhood yeah oh see this is where i was going to be <laughs> we got a whole um section on that yeah um, those things matter it really does let me say this like i so i grew up in long beach i grew up in a very filipino household never really saw my parents oh, wow. <clears throat> i'm the the youngest of three my siblings are in their 50s already so wow. i was like a oopsie baby like i like counted the time back when i was born i'm like i'm born in september go back nine months that's around the holidays like uh, i definitely was it landed like, right in there well no my mom told me she was like i didn't even know i was pregnant with you till like three months later and i was like oh, okay i'm definitely was yeah and she's like no you're my miracle baby i'm like okay i know what that means that's a sweet way <laughs> of putting it mom right <laughs> thanks um, to all the moms out yeah, there yeah no for sure and so like I navigated a lot of things at an early age on my own. Mm. Also, like in our household, it was like you were really angry or you're really freaking sad. Really? There was no like regulation of emotions. There's no, hey, come talk to me. How are you doing? It was just like, figure it out. That's life, you know? And so at such a young age, I was already like crying myself to sleep or feeling wow. very like nobody understands like no one's hearing me no one's listening yeah. to me because i'm a kid did you and your parents have a language barrier no um so they i'm ilocano so there's different ki like kinds of Fili not kinds i don't want to say kinds there's different <laughs> filipinos there's a gotcha. ilocano there's tagal there's actually 80 different dialects yeah. in the philippines right so anyways like a very old school filipino household where like no one talks about their feelings Nobody communicates, and when we do, it's either in the form of yelling. You know, I, I grew up in a, and you know, I'm going to just say this, because this is where it gets heavy, is like, I grew up in a household where there was a lot of yelling. And I feel like a lot of the shit that I've seen, like, 
growing up and you know at such a young age like carried on with me into my adult life so mm. kind of taking it back to your kids it's like damn i didn't have anybody to talk to i had to navigate through shit on my own you know my sister and brother were much older than me so they were doing their own thing mm. you know they were also in their teenage years so my parents had more i think attention on them mm. because they're, they're raising teenagers while i'm still like you know eight seven eight years mm. old doing me um and I listened to a lot of R and B when I was little. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna get you. Like in that's why I'm phase. an R and B girl. Like I, I was always listening to like slow jams and stuff. Like it's crazy because yeah. I identified with that. And so, I mean, my hope is as a mother is like sometimes when I catch myself. So, like if I'm having a moment, you know, and I and I switch back to when I felt that way when I was a kid, and then sometimes I trip out because I see my daughter. And I see her going through the same shit that I did. And that honestly scares the shit out of me. Like, mm -hmm. and that's why like my passion is to like talk and like tell people what's up and tell speak up how you feel. I'm constantly telling my daughter, like, tell me how you feel. And my son, if you're mm -hmm. going through something, you're scared, I need you to tell me how you feel. I'm not gonna judge you. I'm not gonna be mad at you but I want you to tell me how you feel. I'm always gonna be there because no one ever told me that. Mm. And you know, I started going to therapy to kind of navigate through those triggers. Like, how could my parents never like taught me to like do this? You know, yes, I can have a home without yelling. You know, um, those are things that I really strive for is to have a peaceful home mm. be able to regulate my emotions teach i don't care that my kids are like nine and seven i think these are the most crucial years you know to um to put that on them yeah so it's like yeah i grew up in a pretty crazy like crazy household can i ask you why your household had so much yelling and anger what what was happening to cause it what was the catalyst i see a lot of myself from my mom. Hmm. Like sometimes I catch myself I'm like, oh shit, like I'm turning to my mom. Like I have, you know what I mean? And it's like, even the way like I like, put my hand on my hip or something like that and it like those things like frighten me. But at the same time, like what was she going through at her age? Cause the stuff that I was going through in these past couple years, my mom was about the same age. She had me when she was like in her late, she was I think 39 when she hmm. had me. And I'm thinking to myself like, what was going on? Because now that I'm married, like, first of all, that's another conversation. Yeah. But marriage is tough. Like, it's probably one of the hardest things, relationships that you are you will ever be in, right? Other than with yourself. So that's why I tell it, you know? And so it's like, my mom was just somebody that was always on the go, like, you know, and I don't even know if I'm supposed to be saying this, but, <laughs> you know, she was, she gambled a lot. She was a gambler risk taker risk it all like that adrenaline like yeah. my mom was so much she's so much fun first of all like she's somebody you want to party with and drink with because she's so funny she's like the life of the party but she just i think made really bad choices you know and i think they came here as immigrants in the 70s then my mom went back and married my dad and then they came here really early on and i feel like you know at that time and my mom and dad are in their late 70s so i feel mm -hmm. like during those times like minimum wage is like three bucks and when you come from a foreign country into the u.s it's like it's like survival mode yeah they're not thinking about investing in real estate <laughs> they, don't you know know. They, don't know. they don't know anything about that they're not saying hey i'm gonna go to law school and become a lawyer like that just wasn't like in their card so i feel like a lot of the the arguments of my parents so now that i'm married and a mother i think was a, a lot of it had to do with money i have a very similar upbringing in in that case in terms of like gambling i think a lot of us uh asians do especially like immigrant asians yeah. because we it's like uh, very similar to people who win like the lottery and they're statistically more likely to go broke is because we don't know financial literacy it's yeah. not something we have like that the people who know how to do that here in america that's like generational knowledge that's yeah. passed down yeah we come here for opportunities that we've never had before so we don't know how to react once we get those opportunities right mm -hmm. and that's something that's passed down that's new to us right because back in the philippines or back in vietnam mm -hmm. losing and gambling 
some money you were already broke to start with. Nothing changed. You know, you didn't move down. Yeah. You're exactly where you've been. But to get something and to feel like you have some power in your life and not know how to control it, that's when gambling takes over. And I've seen it time and time again where it causes a lot more issues because in at least in Vietnam, we kind of just laugh at it. Right. Yeah. We're just like, oh, we lose some money. It's just like another yeah. day in the neighborhood. Yeah. Right. But over here, it's like you have so much more opportunity. So that means you have so much more to lose. And mm. it's it's a struggle that even I kind of deal with. And, you know, very similar to how you were saying, yeah. you see some of your mom and yourself. I, yeah. I see some of my dad and mom and myself. Yeah. And, and in regards to the negative and positive, of course. Yeah. And that scares me sometimes. And that's actually helped me kind of stray away from some of the habits, some of the negative habits that they have. Yeah. Like my dad was extremely hot headed, like mm -hmm. extremely like destroying stuff. And I always took it as like, that's what I don't want to be like. Of course, there are things that, that are positive about him that I'm like, oh, I want to be exactly like him in that way. Yeah. You like learn to pick and choose that you don't have to be exactly like your parents. So I'll kind of give you like an example. I, when I was younger, I used to be very open to my significant others as far as like how life was at home. Mm -hmm. Like if my mom and dad were fighting, if they were getting physical, if they were yelling, I would let them know because I think. In a way, now looking back in hindsight, I'm, this is the first time I'm actually thinking this. I kind of just trauma dumped on, on my exes, you know, and this is like yeah. in my teenage years. But I did it because I believed it was like a safe space. Like, who's going to understand me but my significant other at Absolutely. the time? And uh, I remember, I guess she had told her mom, and her mom told her, like, hey, watch out for him. Like, yeah. the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Wow. And when I heard that, I was like, damn, you know, I do have some tendencies that are very similar. And I don't want that to be in a determining factor in my future relationships, right? Yeah. Like my, why my significant other should be scared of me. Right. And why I should hold back what was my reality in order to make them feel safe, right? Because I could just tell the people I date, like, oh, my childhood was great and nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. But then that's closing off a side of me that was real. And so I don't want to do that in order to make sure that they feel safe because they're scared that yeah. I'm like my parents. Yeah. That's like a breath of fresh air. Like not a lot of people understand that. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's like that takes a lot of work. I could tell you've done a lot of like <laughs> inner work, um, just how you come off. And I, you know, I was never able to talk about this stuff. These are things that I was harboring for many, many, many years mm -hmm. down to when I was my daughter's age. Wow. You know, um, carried on into my like teen years, my young adult years, all the way up until now. I would say like in the last maybe two years, I've I'm like, oh, OK, I get it. I understand, mm -hmm. you know, because I feel like, too, when I, I had told you that I had started a podcast yeah. called Ask Ash. And I went in like heavy, like I was afraid of money. This is why I'm afraid of money. Like That's great. my parents, this and that, you know, the fear of it, of starting a business, leaving a career that, you know, was good. I mean, I traveled the world. I made good money, like, but I fucking hated it. I hated going to work every day, Monday through Friday, sitting in traffic for two hours, coming into work, knowing that like, my boss was out there chilling like you know what i mean like i put a lot of blood sweat tears into what i do i'm very passionate about my job and what i do so i feel like sometimes i crave this like validation right of like mm. good job because i've no one's ever told me that even in my household oh. you know and that's another thing too you know growing up um and what i make sure to always tell my kids is good job son Go ahead, son. Go ahead, daughter. Like, I hyped them up because I never got that. You know, it was like almost expected. You're supposed to get an A on your test. What do you mean? Good job. Yeah. You're supposed to be respectful and shut up and not say anything when there's adults around. You know, that ex it's like uh, that cultural like stigma of just like you're supposed to be this like complacent, obedient child and yeah. not like be a rebel. Because I was a rebel, like, mm -hmm. I did a lot of crazy stuff, you know, growing up. Mean? First of all, I was running around, my first boyfriend 
was at 13. I was like climbing out of windows. I used to like hide. Oh, really? I was climbing. I was doing it all. And like, I remember there was a day like, and I would like walk from home from school and I'd be at my boyfriend's house. Mm -hmm. And then my dad and my uncle show up, but I had already left. Like I would get in so much trouble because it was like, I feel they kept me from doing things, you know? Yeah, it's crazy how we look at it now and we understand a lot of the tendencies of what we do. It's are the things that our parents tried to protect us from. Yeah. Right. And it, it comes out one way or another. And yeah. it's more it's more like we're we're more inclined to do it because exactly. they want to keep us away from it. And honestly, too, like. I had my first boyfriend, like real relationship at like 14 and he was 18. So in my mind, I'm as a mother, I'm like, damn, you let me run around with an 18 year old. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm gonna be straight up. Like I got on birth control at like 15. Like oh, yeah. if that was my daughter, like, hell no. Like, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I trip out on like, where were my parents at? What were they doing? How do they not know that I'm out here and running the streets? Mm -hmm. Like being bad <laughs> you yeah. know what i'm saying and it's like but i had my older sister she was she's super conservative you know oh. she's the nurse she how did, much older is she 14 years older than oh, me wow. so she was gap. like a, a mom to me like a mother figure but mm -hmm. you know she kept me on check it was more that like you know how asian parents like instill fear in you like you don't want to be like that they're yeah. drug addicts or like don't do that you know it's like they would scare you into like the homies like they're they're chilling and they're having fun and they're like they're bad people but when you get to know them it's like they're actually really down to earth and if anything like they're the ones i go to to like regulate my emotions and mm -hmm. talk my shit and and cope because you guys weren't able to give that for me so you know it's almost like you know being in a gang like a lot of gang members always say like my homies are they're those that's my family yeah right so like that's just kind of how I coped with a lot of things. Uh, my sister was, you know, very much there for me um, because she was older. She became a nurse. You know what I mean? Like she's the one that brought Christmas home. Like mm. we never had a Christmas tree. I, my parents never took me to Disneyland oh, wow. like that because they were just so like busy on the grind. Like my dad. So my dad's a Scorpio. And like he's very like he's a hard worker. He worked as a welder when he came here and he was also like the neighborhood mechanic. He was always under the car. He always had dirty nails, like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was my dad and, um, you know, going back to the hustle and grind and I feel like what you were saying earlier, how you see like, you know, your mom's characteristics in yourself or you, you see yourself, like your dad, you see him in yourself. Like, I feel the same way. Like my dad was just a hustler. Like he, was, he can just like switch money like nothing. Like. Mm one hour he has like a wad of like cash in his back pocket mm. you know and it's like dang where did you where did you get that from he's like oh i just went to go fix you know three cars in the neighborhood you know what i mean like yeah. that was my dad and then my mom was a spender <sighs> you see the dynamic so it's yeah. like that's what a lot of i feel like a lot of um arguments erupted from that's uh that's very similar to my upbringing yeah. very similar my mom worked also but she was more of a spender and i think what happened was my dad's a very minimal guy like he doesn't really give a shit about expensive stuff nice cars doesn't really care about any of that my mom she didn't either she was like a country girl from vietnam you know but i think there is you know this is calling out my community a little bit but like yeah. in the vietnamese community there is a lot of people trying to show off and embellish what their life really is. Yeah. So whether it's overspending on luxury items like bags or cars and talking to their friends about it, it was very common. And then it becomes like the circle, this community of people who compare themselves, right? And not just in their belongings or their assets, but also in their children. Yeah. So, you know, I grew up with, you know, my mom never having anything designer to her buying designer things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I also grew up with a lot of comparison. I'm like, why don't you have straight A's? You know, my, my friend's son has straight A's. Yeah. Why don't you make X amount of money? My friend's son makes X amount of money. So I just always felt like I was never going to meet my parents' expectations. And because I felt like that, I said... 
fuck it. Like if I'm not gonna meet their expectations, I'm just gonna do my own thing. And maybe exactly. this is like a bad comparison, but you ever heard that one army song? I forgot how it goes exactly. I'm terrible with lyrics, yeah. but it says like uh, he accused me of cheating, so I might as well have. And then oh yeah, like Keisha Cole. Yeah, is it Keisha well Cole? Well yeah, yeah, it's like that. Oh, you know, yeah, it's like definitely. It's like yeah, okay, definitely. you accuse me of fucking That's up. Scary. Like I'm gonna <laughs> fuck. All right, yeah. fuck yeah, I might as well be a fuck up. You know. Yeah. Our family dynamics are very similar as far as you know, moms right. being spenders, uh, dad being providers. That's. Hmm. I just, I just want to point out something because that's very interesting that you yourself now is a businesswoman, mm -hmm. entrepreneur, that you've taken both characteristics of your parents, your mom and your dad's side, and now you're like also providing. You're not just a spender. Yeah. You actually want to give your kids something, mm -hmm. not just your time. I'm a little spender, just saying. <laughs> I spend a little bit. <laughs> okay, you spend a little bit. Like, a little bit a lot sometimes. What do you mean? Honestly, um, I'm going to be real with you, you know, like I have a really toxic relationship with money. And I mm. think that's because of what I saw with my parents. So sometimes like when I get really angry or like piss at my husband, I'll go buy something. Oh, like I'll go buy some therapy? like Lululemon leggings or something or okay. whatever. Right. Like I'll spend because it kind of like it's like satisfying like you pissed me off well i'm gonna go buy something <laughs> you know because i was always restrained with money like we couldn't do this we couldn't do that um but then also i had a closet that you can open and like a bunch of toys fell out mm. and i feel like that's where all my this sounds all heavy now but like that's how they bought my love that was their way of shutting me up and it's okay i'll buy you something mm -hmm. you know and it's crazy. Like my daughter is very much the same way. You mm. know, when she buys stuff, like she'll just buy like random stuff. Like, mom, can I get some like, you know, fake nails? I'm like, no, it's going to be on the ground. Like she just buys stuff because she wants to because mm. it makes her feel good. And I think that was what I dealt with with my parents. Like they didn't really talk to me. So they would shut me up by buying me some toys or like, I think my mom told me one time she was like, you cried so hard for a backpack. You like peed in your pants or whatever, but she bought it for me just to, to stop whatever I was feeling. Yeah. And see, and where I'm going with this is that <clears throat> you know, a lot of the stuff like in my adult years is showing up from my childhood. It's like, why am I a crazy spender? Why do I go and buy a, apple mac computer when my husband tells me i'm not supporting your business right now we got money to make you know like stuff like that yeah so it's like those are definitely toxic traits of mine that i have because of the things that like i went through mm -hmm. and i still deal with those things today you know where i'm like uh you know it's kind of like the whole coca cola thing when we went to the store you know, I've been working very hard, like on fitness and, you know, trying to get my body right. This is the first time I've actually been so disciplined in the gym. So it's like a part of me just wants to like get that Coke and drink it and feel good. But it's like it's not good for you. Mm. Like, no, Ash, like, don't buy that. Don't you just worked out this morning. Why would you do that? Being from an Asian background, we we learn to get very temporary pleasures and and sacrifice long term gains because that's how we numb ourselves right so whether some people do it through drinking drugs alcohol retail therapy there's always something because we all go through hardships and especially as a in a culture that we don't know how to express ourselves we we seek other ways of finding relief yeah and in yours <laughs> yeah it's retail therapy right some other people could be drinking i know some people who cope using drugs and I it's definitely after they do it they almost realize what the original intention was yeah you know like I drink I'm no saint maybe a little bit too much I'm also gonna admit to that mm -hmm. but I do know it's because a lot of times it comes with some kind of relief and release too right so if I can't talk, especially in relationships, I've noticed that I'll do that in relationships. If I feel like I can't communicate with you, I'll just go out with my homies and get, you know, hammered and talk shit and say whatever, you know, because I feel like I don't have that safe space within a relationship to talk about it. 
obviously not healthy. I'm getting triggered by you just saying that. Yeah. I'm like, so that's why my ex did that. Or that's, that's so crazy that you say that because it's like, where do you think that comes from, right? Like when you get into an argument with your girl and you're in a relationship and your first instinct is to do something and like piss them off, like to make them feel like hurt or, you know, you want them to feel the same like pain you're going through but maybe mm. they're just trying to explain something to you and they don't know your love language mm. right so now you go out to the bar and piss everyone off like it's kind of like that's so hurtful you know as a female like why do we why do men do that like why do you want to like get back at us so bad <laughs> <laughs> i think because men are raised to not communicate i think men are you know there are a lot of men with very few words right that's more typical with men than women and that's because we grew up having to withhold everything and i think now also in a day and age of you know 2024 we're more censored now than ever and what i mean by that is you know old school in my generation our generation yeah. men weren't supposed to talk about sad things right you cannot cry you're not supposed to cry you're a man I why are you crying that. right so that. therefore you yeah. take away the the sad more vulnerable empathetic emotions yeah and then what are men allowed to feel yeah what emotion do you feel like men were allowed to feel back then anger anger right and now if men get angry they raise their voice something happens how are they viewed then As, normalized like it's See, I don't like that. No, we're going to go yeah. into a whole other topic right now. First of all, like, <laughs> I hear that a lot in my culture. Just like any man, it's like, boys are not supposed to cry. Don't cry, son. Of and course. like, you know, I'm not going to lie. My husband has said that. And I like pop back every time. Like, don't ever tell him that. Because what you're doing is, is you're creating a pattern now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of relationships out there where they, they're with men that are they don't communicate, they're not emotional, they don't wanna cry, you know, they have to hold all that shit in because it's like, you're a man, you're not supposed to cry. You're a man, you're not supposed to show feeling. But it's like, then you're with your wife or your partner and they're more in their like soft era, soft feeling, like how do you coexist with that? You're always gonna be at odds and mm -hmm. it's like sad, you know? So when my husband says stuff like that, I'm like, look, son, like, I don't want you to be a crybaby because there's a difference. There's a difference between a crybaby and you're always crying and whining about stuff. And then there's also a difference between like showing emotion and crying because you're happy or crying because you're feeling overwhelmed with joy. Like, that's OK. Like, it's OK to like be in your feminine as a man, like mm. just how much women are in their masculine. Yeah. So it's like, I've been in my masculine my entire life, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like if you can't tell and it's got me to where, you know, it's got me to director levels. It's mm -hmm. got me to where I'm at today because I've always had to be in my masculine because I always was told like, don't be a bitch. Like, you know, stand up for yourself. Don't cry. Don't show emotion. Like mm -hmm. I had a boss tell me like, don't ever cry in front of your team or don't ever cry because it shows it's a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. And I hate that. And I'm like, no, fuck that. I'm crying. My, my, like, <laughs> my people that I work with, if you see me crying, I'm just in a lot of emotion. That's the real me. You mm. feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I no, know. I do. I actually crying, appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I actually appreciate that yeah. because, again, that's the realness that we're all kind of lacking now, right? Is that, like, behind closed doors, like, you do feel like that. And we were prior just hiding all that and now like in a day of social media like we we hide all those things from anyone to see right and yeah. we only show this perfect version of ourselves mm -hmm. and it's really hard for you know the youth especially to differentiate if that's like true or not like yeah. but we know what we're doing yeah you know we know like i know that I'm not always gonna be a tough guy. Like I ain't no bitch. Like that was my. That used to be my favorite of saying. Course, I used to be like, yeah. I ain't no fucking bitch. I don't give a shit. Yeah, but <laughs> like, there is yeah. a time and place for both, right? Like exactly. Yeah, like, crybaby. You're right. Like there's some people who you know victimize themselves all the time, yeah. and yeah, sometimes you definitely gotta, yeah. for lack of a better word, like man up. Yeah. You know, but there are times where it's like it's okay for you to cry. Yeah. It's okay for you to be vulnerable. It's okay for you to bitch, right? And yeah. and I think, you know, going back to what you were saying about like, why do men do that, right? Why do you go out with like your dudes and you have drinks and then you talk about your problems? 
I think for me personally, and I can't speak for other men. Yeah. I felt like I couldn't have those conversations and not be judged yeah. within the confines of my relationship. Got and that's it. why I, I sought for it elsewhere. You know, very similar, like you would seek for, you know, what you didn't have in your childhood yeah. where your parents didn't show you, you know, affection. Yeah. And now you like go to other people and show them that, right? Yeah. It's because you didn't have it yourself. So I think that's why, personally. Relationships are hard. Like I said earlier, it's probably one of the hardest relationships you will ever be in. Because when it's like a commitment, mm -hmm. you know, um, opposites sometimes attract. Just in my situation, like my husband's very different. We're like so different in a lot of ways, but we're, we're the same, right? Mm. Like he's like my yin or yang or whatever you want to call it. But I feel like... That's why it goes back to raising kids and constantly like, and I don't pound it into my son, but it's just more like, it's okay to cry, son. It's okay to, you know, be upset. Next time we're going to talk about it. How did it make you feel? Like I literally, I feel like I give my kids an own therapy session. Really? No. And I, I think it's so needed. Like when my, like the other day, my son was like so upset on his sister because she wanted to hang out with her friends because they're getting at that age now where like she's going to middle school and he's still in elementary so he doesn't really understand why like and they share rooms right now like we're in the mm -hmm. process of like you know getting his room fixed but like she's like i need my privacy and and he they would just walk around like with their little, you know because they were mm -hmm. like little babies and now she's like uh like close the door like i need yeah, privacy <laughs> right and so it, he took it really hard as like mm -hmm. rejection and he was so angry he's an aries he's like angry about it his emotion is like being angry and so i go well son how do you feel why are you angry you know and like it took a while for him to like come around and he was like violet doesn't want to play with me anymore Hmm. And it was like the saddest thing because in my heart, I was like, I know, babe. But sometimes you got to know that one day you're going to need to give each other space. You're going to have your own friends. And it's like, whereas if that was me when I was younger and that happened on my end, my parents would be like, Ugh, deal with it. Yeah. And I feel like those are patterns. It's patterns of telling your son not to cry. And then they get into relationships when they get older and you're doing the same damn shit you when you're parents were doing you're generally like start you're creating this generational curse of like bad communication mm -hmm. within men you know um not being able to be in their feminine when they need to be like women are emotional creatures like or whoever what relationship you're in but there's always going to be an emotional person so you have to meet them halfway you gotta be out your ego like mm -hmm. oh that's like what it is it's like egos you know right now we're talking about your son yeah have you ever experienced that with your significant other since you said you grew up more in your masculine does that mean you were the less emotional person in the in the relationship or no i'm like emotional gangster like that's the emotional gangster like that's what i'm saying is like we are both hotheads we both uh. grew up in that culture where like I'm a man. You can't tell me what to do, woman or whatever, you know? I'm like, what? Like, I was always, like, on the fence because my mom was that woman. Mm. She always popped back at my dad. She always, like, fought him, you know? She never was that, like, obedient wife. Like, no, don't be afraid to say something or speak up. So it's a, it's wo World War II sometimes in our house because we're both very passionate people, mm. you know? And we're in our egos a lot. Like, I'm a Virgo, like... Of course I want to be right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Of course I always want to be right. Yeah. You know, whereas he's an Aquarius and they're like quiet storms. And it's like, has, they're very transactional people. So it's like, it's hard to have conversations with him because mm -hmm. we just don't align. So now that you're kind of naming off all these characteristics of <laughs> <laughs> these zodiac signs, I'm, I'm going to have to ask you. Because I, I'm not a zodiac sign okay. person at all. Just, I'm not very spiritual yeah. in general. Yeah. Was that always like a big factor in how you perceived things when you were dating? You know, it's funny is like, I'm telling you, when I was a kid, I read a lot too. Hmm. I was very, I was not like into what everyone else was into. Like back in the nineties, like what is, what was there like pogs and shit? Yeah. And like, you know, I wasn't, Marbles, I was into pogs. that, but I wasn't into that. Like I was around older people. Hmm. And like, I was like intrigued by like crystals. There is this store at Lakewood Mall called like Natural Wonders. I don't know if you remember. 
Mm. It was a rock store. And I was like, ooh, this is dope. Like, this is like all these crystals. I was very intrigued by the cosmos. Oh, I wow. felt connected. I don't know. I felt connected to it in some weird That's form. That's because you were reading? Reading read stuff. About it and then or like I would go into that store and like feel a weird connection to mm. it. Like, it was just so pretty to me, right? So I started reading about like, you know, um, zodiac signs. I was like my daughter's age reading about zodiac signs. I was reading about like all that. So I I identify much with like zodiac signs. It's not entirely true, but a lot of it is. But it's fun. I don't yeah. take it too seriously, you know? Like look what happened. I married someone who was like totally not my supposedly not my match. What what is that called when someone's like your match? Your soulmate? I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't know about so that. You're, soulmate. You're, your no, husband's soulmate. not your soulmate? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I do identify with it. it. It's fun to play with, but yeah, I mean, that's what I was doing when I was a kid. Is like, oh, this person's a Gemini. Like, oh, I don't mess with her because she's an Aries or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, like, um, I do use that. And then my daughter does that too. You know, she's like, mom, like all my friends are Tauruses and we're all Earth people. I'm like, oh, oh my, my god, goodness. you sound like me. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Here we go. Did you tell her though, like not to give it so much weight? Like it's fun, but. Okay, I would be honest with you. So like two years ago, I was like in my like spiritual, hmm. in my spiritual like meditation, buying crystals, staging the house. I still kind of do that now, but not as extreme. Um, like I was very much into that and I was like playing, doing tarot, like all that stuff going wow. to like, I was doing it all. Well, not that like black magic shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, you weren't sacrificing like, lambs. No, none of that. None of that. It was like angel work. I was very much into like numbers and all these things. Cause I would trip out. It's like when you're going crazy and going through shit, like you got to find some type of outlet. Right. Um, so I'm like, all right, I like this meditation stuff. I started reading more like self-help books and like kind of dabbling and all that. You know, this is before I was going to therapy. Um, but yeah, my daughter one day was like, what are you doing, mom? <laughs> like in my room like flipping cars she's like what is that? i'm like don't touch that don't touch that. it's nothing <laughs> like it's nothing you don't know about this yet you know um and i think now she kind of like understands because those are things that you do see on social media now it's like mm. angel numbers or like one 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 and things like that yeah. you know so she sees that she's like mom what does 11 11 mean or i saw you know zero 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 what does that mean you know so it's it's kind of fun at the same time. But I tell her, like, you know, um, don't take it too seriously. Mm. It's just for fun. Because yeah. I definitely know people who take it, like, very seriously yeah. as if it dictates their life. You know, destiny. Yeah. And to me, like, that's that's scary. Like, to, <laughs> to No, it. I know. I know. It's, it's, I, I have a funny ass story. So, like, um, my husband, right, like, he knows that I'm. I'm like a weirdo. Like everyone, I tell people, I'm like, I'm freaking weird, dude. Like I'm like a hustler, a gangster, like, but I'm also really fucking weird. Like mm. I'm like the most like introverted, like extrovert or mm. however you want to say it, right? But I'm just open to a lot of things. And so one of the things was like, I connected with like spirituality and the angel numbers, you know? Like it would appear to me and be like, oh shit, you know? But actually the reason why I started getting into that is... It was the time when I wanted to like leave the fashion industry. That was like a sign for me. And that's why I do believe in spirituality and angel numbers and things like that. Um, so what happened? What happened in the industry? That the sign that you said. Well, I mean, again, like I worked in the fashion industry. And for those of you that know like what it's like, it, it is like a devil's wear product. It's so cutthroat. It's so toxic. Like... And then especially being with like a bunch of women, there was always competition in the space. Mm. And I've always been in my masculine. So I was ready to always like tell someone how it was. And I've gotten in trouble before. I've gotten fired for my mouth and my really? attitude. Yeah. Like I would get into it with everyone because everyone pissed me off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because again, like in those spaces, creative spaces, and I'm like, you know, in my early 30s, probably like 30, you know, and everyone's competition that's just the vibe you know and so I was and then I worked my way up to management and then that's when everyone was like didn't like me right and I'm as a I'm a better boss and leader than I am an employee mm. and that's why I know this because that's why I own my business right but like I would get into it with like my VPs 
I'd get into it with my boss. Like, I would get in. It was so toxic. Like, mm. ooh, that part of the industry is what really wanted me to leave. That's wild because I personally, I'm not really confrontational like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I could speak my mind, but I'm not going to cuss you out or something. Yeah. But in my relationships, I, I've definitely in the past have had a hard time controlling that. And that's like a tendency that I see from my, my dad that's like in me. And that has always been kind of scary, you know? Yeah. Like I've never been physically violent, but I've definitely been verbally abusive before. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what turns me off to it so much in my everyday life because I'm scared of, like, the repercussions. Yeah. Like, what when you were in relationships because you were saying, like, oh, yeah, you guys are both, like, you know, more assertive. Yeah. I think the feeling that I get that reminds me to not do it is, like, when I get mad and I yell, I always feel like such a huge amount of shame. Like, like, yeah. I, like I really fucked up, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And to be kind of polar opposites with you, like my significant others have always been like very soft-spoken. Mm -hmm. Like they're, we're not like clashing heads like that, yeah. you know? And what's weird is that causes me to be more angry where I'm like... You're like, fight me. <laughs> no, not so no. much like that. I want them to, yeah. to like fight Engage, me, but it's but like, like react or yeah, be more yeah, because like, I'm the one who's getting mad and they're calm. Yeah. So they're like, why are you yelling? Oh and that makes my me God. That's gaslighting. Mad. They're is, super is gaslighting. That gaslighting? That, I don't know. That's some narcissistic uh, behavior. Yeah. Cause they'll be like, know. I'm not cussing at you. I'm not yelling. And then I'm like, but that pisses you off. It does. Oh, it I does. hate when my husband, my husband does stuff like that. <laughs> Like, we'll fight, right? I'm like, yeah, you know, fuck that. We know we're just getting into it. And he was like, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, okay. Like, oh. start laughing and, like, mocking me. And then I get even more mad. I'm like, oh, my God, what an asshole. And then it, like, turns into this big argument. And now we're feeling disrespected at this point. Ooh. You know? Like, the boundaries have crossed. And then you start jabbing into, like, that's why you're like that because your mom is like that Ooh. like we really like go in at it back in the day when we first you know started dating got mad you were like like i we like to bring hash shit up from the past yeah. and throw it on each other and it's such a bad thing to do it feels so fucking good but it's <laughs> <laughs> right in the moment in the moment it's like i gotcha fuck yeah that's a zinger yeah. like exactly Ooh, that hurt right yeah but it's like by the end of that it's like you done blown up the house all the walls have come down and you're now standing there like butt naked feeling stupid because at the end of the day, that's that's your person. Why are we tearing each other down this way? Yeah. Like we have a beautiful home. We have two beautiful kids. Like we're blessed. We pay our mortgage every month. You know, we're straight. We're eating good. Like why are we getting to this point of wanting to tear each other down? It's sucks you know mm -hmm. i've been married almost now for 10 years and it's like we're both fucking tired we're like i'm tired of your shit you know and there's been moments of like do we just keep going because i don't want to be like my parents and stay together because of the kids we're actually damaging their you know upbringing and, and how they perceive relationships and what yeah. marriage looks like by staying together you know um but the thing is is i i believe in marriage though you know what I mean? I want, that is something that's important to me, you know? And so like, I talk about like faith or like, I'm very big on my faith now. And I say now, but I'm more in, I feel like I've gotten my faith back. Mm. I stepped away from like religion and all that. Cause I didn't resonate with it. You know, like it's crazy. Like I grew up Catholic, baptized Catholic, but my mom was like a Buddhist or like she was always reading. Mm -hmm. She was into, and that's why I am the way I am is because of her. She was reading about like Buddhism, Taoism, like all these different things. And I'm like, that's why I'm very open in like certain religion. I'm like, I, that doesn't resonate with me. It doesn't make sense. Mm. So it's like, I believe in my faith and our marriage. And it's like, those are things that are important to me. So how long have you guys been together? I know you said married about 10 years. We've been together for 12 years, 12, 13 years now. Yeah. So I was in New York at the time. I think he just got it out of a engagement or something like that. Oh, wow. But we've known each other since we were like 12. But we didn't start dating until like in my like mid-20s. I was in New York at the time with my ex going through a breakup. Hmm. 
you know but we've known each other for that long but it's crazy because i was like he was always that guy but he was like a troublemaker what do you mean he was a troublemaker he was like he was like a skater you know what i mean bad smoking weed stealing shit you know just being bad yeah. you know when you grow up in long beach and you're hanging out in the wrong crowd you're doing shit you're not supposed to be doing he was him right and I'm like, oh, I would never date him. I would never be with him. He's such a loser. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. But he's so cute. Like, he's cute. Like, I'm attracted to him mm. in a sense. But I would never date him, right? Um, and then we knew mutual people. Like, my cousin is actually, um, her man is, like, their cousin. So we all knew each other. But I, you know, at the time, I was in a... Um, 10 year relationship with someone else so he was always that guy like he would mm -hmm. randomly pop up in places or like if me and my like dude were arguing he'd randomly call me like what the what? heck what? yeah it was so weird like he would just pop up like randomly like he wasn't hanging up and me like oh i heard you and your dude are fighting no he was just like hey what are you doing i'm like fuck are you calling me for <laughs> like i haven't talked to you in like three years like it was so weird he always came around and so um when i was in new york you know, I was going through my breakup um, and my cousins that I'm really close to that knows him was like, hey, somebody wants to talk to you. Or like I would like fuck around and say like, hey, what's up with your boy Lo? Like, what's up with him? She's mm -hmm. like, oh, he just got out of an engagement. I don't really tell him to come to New York, you know, like messing, totally messing around. At this time of my life, I'm like, I don't give a shit about relationships. Like, I don't care. I'm over it, you know. And so, yeah, I just started hanging out. He came to New York and that was it. Uh, so he didn't he wasn't even living in new york but you were i was so he went to visit you basically yeah and he was like a childhood crush like i've always liked him since like we were 12 did he tell you the same thing about you like what he thought about you we always knew it though we always knew there was like a chemistry everyone that knows about us was like it's like a we always had chemistry oh. it was always making like shy like i couldn't like look in his face or what you know that feeling when i was talking about earlier mm -hmm. your first crush like your you know first boy he was that for me yeah that's crazy and now yeah. you guys are married and we're married with two kids and a dog 12 years later 12 years later well i mean i'm glad you kind of talked about this a little bit because you mentioned that you guys do get in arguments and sometimes you get you know gaslight each other and you know there's work to be done, right? Yeah. Because this is your person. You believe in marriage and you want this marriage to last. What were some steps that you guys took to improve on that? You know, I'm going to be completely honest with you. It was more like I was questioning myself. Like, mm. is there something fucking wrong with me? Because every relationship I've been in has been this crazy. The yelling, the arguing. Every single one. Every single one. Oh, wow. And I have no shame in saying this. Every single one I cheated on. Mm. I have not cheated on my husband, though. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's, this is important to me. Like, I'm married to you. Like, I'm not trying to do that. Because I've been there, done that. I've been down that route. And that's what happened with my last relationship. So I'm very against that. You know? Mm. There's a lot of temptation out there. But, you know, what has led me to really... Um, correct our issues is correct myself first like why am i like this why do i get triggered why does he piss me off why do i react this way you go down that rabbit hole of the why and i was going through shit during this time where i'm like i need to start taking accountability for what's going on here because we're taking it too far hmm. so i had it I, i'm still dealing with it now and that's when I decided, I was like, you know what? I think I need to go to therapy because I got issues. It's no longer him anymore and what he does that's pissing me off. I think I have some issues with myself because of what I went through growing up and what I saw in my idea of what marriage looked like between my parents. I feel like that shit was coming up in our marriage. Mm. And your biggest thing is to get away from fear. Your, your ego comes up, your your walls come up. And that's why we argued a lot because I had like inner demons, like, you know what I mean? That I'm like, I didn't know what I was going through. To think that in the first place is probably the hardest part for people who end up going down that road because it takes a lot of like looking in, right? Like, who, who am I really? Mm -hmm. You know, because to be honest, like cheating is very self-indulgent, right? Yeah. It's like, I just care about me now. Right. It's so selfish. It is. For you to think that of yourself, like, they probably don't, you know. They probably don't think, like, oh, I'm being so selfish right now. I'm like, no, it's just, I'm just going, 
you know, people justify it all the time. Like, yeah. well, he's not there for me emotionally. So, okay, I'm going to go emotionally cheat on someone else. That's, but that's not cool. You guys made a commitment to be together. Like, what type of person are you if you can't be straight up with your significant other? You know, so it's mm. like, cheating is just like there's emotional cheating there's physical cheating emotional cheating is like the worst cheating really because you're connecting with somebody emotionally those are like for me in a marriage it's like those are the things that you hold sacred within your marriage is the emotional part of it no one is ever going to know your inside it's yeah. <laughs> not like that but you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, your yeah. inside like your heart like who you are like why would you just share that with somebody else you guys made a commitment to to be together that's what it is when you're married it's like you're flesh flesh of flesh one right so why would you go out and just give that to somebody else what does that say about you hmm. you understand what i'm saying so yeah. it's like it's uh like cheating is so bad it's because i've been there been there done it i know what it feels like i know how much it hurts the other person and at the end of the day it's like you really got to come within yourself and be like you know you fucked up ash yeah it's crazy you have to really dig deep and be like you know what like you got to be accountable for the shit that you do mm -hmm. it's about being a good human and, and being honest and like because there's just no good out of it you get nothing out of being inauthentic mm -hmm. you know that's like my name of my business is lava right so real quick like lava is like my initials of my family so lowell ashley violet ashton right mm. lava so within my business, it's about love. Like everything you do, you got to do with love. If you don't love what you do, why are you doing it? Everything you do, you got to do with love. And then accountability. Like as a human being, we need to be accountable for the shit that we put out there. Like if you're a business owner, be accountable for your shit. Like mm. people appreciate honesty at the end of the day. No matter how fucked up shit is, always tell the truth. I tell my kids that all the time. Be accountable. You know, and if you're like in a public space or you're an athlete or, you know, you, you have you're in a public eye, you have to be accountable for how you present yourself because mm -hmm. there's so many people watching you that look up to you. You know, there's a lot of fucking assholes out there that don't use their platform the right way. Mm -hmm. And then there's value. Like, where do you hold value for yourself and for your business or how do you show value? You know, what are your values? That's a big thing. And then there's authenticity. If you're not authentic to yourself, you're not authentic in your business, you're not gonna thrive. So you're gonna be stuck in imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Like people like authenticity. People relate with people that are authentic and they're in themselves. Like you're one on one. So why are you trying to be like the next person or why are you trying to keep up with the Kardashians or whatever? Yeah. Oh, that's that's great. Oh, I didn't know you had laid out <laughs> like, like that. I was like, oh shit. Like, no, <laughs> that's first, my I whole thing. It was just thing. like your family name. And then you went no, it's, into that's the why God acronym. got me, dude. Like, I'm telling you, lava is for me. And that's what I tell myself every time I feel like, oh, my business isn't thriving mm -hmm. or I can't believe I did this or it gets hard. It's like, lava will always be for me. It's my baby, right? Like, it's my family. That's my why. Um, it's the name of my business. It's no one else's. There's so many other like brands out there that do what I do in terms of like, you know, fashion apparel and manufacturing, but I'm me. I'm one of one. Like no one's gonna be Amber Ashley. No one's gonna have my personality. So when people are like, Oh, that's your competition, not really. You know, like I'm gonna respect their hustle and what they do, but you know I do do and this is a little insider tip for business owners. Like right, run it. Get your paper out, like Instagram and like social media is so crazy when it comes to like being a realtor or fashion brand. Everybody wants to put out what looks good, mm. you know, like and you get caught up scrolling, looking at all their wins and them like closing deals and like booking clients. And you know that you cannot say that that doesn't fuck with your head as a business owner. It does because mm. now you're comparing yourself because once you start comparing yourself, it's like that's where you got to watch out. With me, when it comes to competition, I already tell myself that I'm my own competition. You know, I'm me. No one's ever going to give the value of my clients or service my clients how I do because I'm me, right? And so when it comes to that, you really just have to know your value too, like what you bring to the table. And once you understand your worth, you understand your value, um, that's when you have that edge to you. Because there's a difference between being cocky and confident and then arrogant. People mistake like being confident as arrogant. 
Mm. But really, you know your true self. So where I'm trying to get to in this is like, as a business owner, and this is a tip, like, don't ever say you got competition. Always be one up. So when I have like, oh, that's some, they do some of the things that I do. They're kind of running the same establishment as I am. Well, let me go look in their shit and see what they're doing wrong. Mm. Like I study like the wrong. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to change that. I'm going to fix that because that's their, that's their weakness. So you got to study your competition. Like don't try to follow what they do. Study where they fuck up. Mm. <laughs> it sounds messed up, but like that's the insider business tip because that's where you're going to hold value. What they can't do, you're going to go do it mm. and do it better. And that's really what, that's how you stay above like the competition and separate yourself. So that's all the advice. That's just dropping knowledge on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've been in business how long now? I've only been in business for two years. Two years? Yeah. I know we talked a little bit on Instagram. Sounds like there's lots of ups and downs. I think, yeah. <laughs> not sounds like I know for sure yeah, as a person sure. who has business, businesses too. Did you find yourself feeling at any point like this might not be for me? Absolutely. I still do sometimes. I still wake up thinking like, am I really, do I really want to do this? Am I doing, like, what am I doing this for? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, that that comes with it. It's a very scary thing to to leave something you're comfortable with and follow your passion. It's a scary thing because society tells you that you need to go to work go to school, go to work, get a good job, get a nine to five, buy that house, pay that mortgage, do the white picket fence. I did all that. And that's the thing. I'm not, I'm not coming up to arrogant, but I did all that. It's crazy. Like me and my husband have been married for 10 years, but we did all that. After New York, I got pregnant in eight months. We had our kid. We got married. Months? Yeah, eight months. Wait, wait, after New York. So like you yeah. guys were together at how long at that point? Like eight months. <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck. What the Look, I was in a 10-year relationship and we were both like, you know what? I'm ready. Like, I'm ready to like start a family. Like we just all automatically knew that we wanted to like be together. That's crazy, crazy because you, you just told me that you had gone out to your relationship. You're like, fuck relationships. He just got out of engagement. And then you guys <laughs> meet in New York and you're like, I know we're ready now. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. Well, you know what he told me? He was like, it's so funny. I used to wear this like raggedy old like Tiffany's like promise ring for mm -hmm. my ex. Sorry, if he sees this, like. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know, that was the, that was the thing back then. Tiffany's yeah, like the um, heart charms and all that. That was the thing. So anyways, like he was like, I'm going to replace that. He's like, I'm going to upgrade you. Like, you know, he was just like talking all this shit in my ear. Like, I'm going to do that. You know, I'm going to be better than that. And he did. Hmm. We got, I left New York, still had my apartment, had to go back because I got a job. And then like he, we got pregnant really quickly. We moved in together without a doubt, told his mom I'm moving in. She was like, okay. <laughs> like, and he lived in the back, but we had our first kid. And then after that, like we got married, we bought a condo, we sold our condo, bought a house. I left the fashion industry. I started my own business. You know, he's leveling up in his career. So I feel like we've done a lot in such a short period of time mm. to now where it's like, okay, I'm ready for not the slowdown, but like what's next for us. Mm. So it was crazy. Our our story is crazy because we've known each other for so long, you know, but and that's why I stay loyal to him because we did this shit together. We've we did the whole society thing, the white picket fence, the mm -hmm. house, the kids and all that. Now it's like, I'm at this point in my life where like, I want to get back to me and I want to be a really good mom. I want to be a really good leader. I want to give back to my community. I want to share my story. I want, I want my nieces to know that are in their early twenties and their teens, my kids to know, like, you don't have to be a nurse. No disrespect to all the <laughs> healthcare workers, but I know that's like the stigma, right? Like a lot of like, Filipino people are nurses or in healthcare. What? what? No, I'm just, I'm just you need to be a nurse to like, you know what I mean? And that's the thing is um, you could be whatever the fuck you want to be. Yeah. As long as you um, figure out what your passion is, what you're passionate to do. And some people will figure it out early on in life. Some people later on, it's like they always say like, what's his name? Colonel Sanders didn't like start 40s or something and like he was 60 or, or something was he holy shit damn i don't want to be 60 though when i <laughs> i'm trying to be i'm trying to get ahead of the game now um yeah it's 
entrepreneurship is crazy. And it's like you definitely, so back to the starting five, you definitely got to have your starting five. It's important who you surround yourself with, Mm -hmm. um, the conversations that you have with people. It's like you really got to be around high vibrational people. You know, you can't, it's like I seen something the other day. If you're around like four losers, you're going to be the fifth or whatever. I think it was something like that or broke. You just interchange that with anything, but yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? And it's, it's so true. And it's hard though because... In this journey, I've lost a lot of people that I love in terms of relationships to where it just doesn't make sense anymore. It doesn't serve you anymore. It doesn't serve me anymore. It's like a fucking breakup. It's sad. Like You Marie Kondo these people and you're like, oh, that's it's sad. Out of here. It, it really is sad because, you know, um, I was really close to a um like a sister of mine. We grew up together since the crib. Like we were very always close together and we just could not get it right you know we would always have a falling out then we wouldn't talk and then it was she was going through stuff and then i'm a narcissist she called me a fucking narcissist dude like i was like wow really okay you all right this is not the friend that you got in a fight with that's no no that's that's whole. that's different that's a whole nother story that's Uh, not her (laughs) no she's like my sister and um you know and i prayed to god because i'm big on my faith right now i'm like you know what god if i'm not meant to be in her life right now if just show me a sign and we ended up having a falling out over the holidays over Mm. some dumb shit and i'm like and she would just block me out of nowhere like block me like you didn't even you blocked me and then i can't even respond and then prior to that she actually blocked me too because i was like doing my podcast i was in my like Mm. femme era like doing my podcast like you know being super spiritual and like into stuff and i think that really like made her jealous or something i don't know (laughs) It's crazy, but, like, I had to let her go. Like, you can't just shut me off when you want to shut me off and then come back when you when you want to be around. Yeah, that's uh, that's hard to yeah. differentiate the kind of people in your life, especially people who come off as friends. And people, you know, some people could become your friends because they're jealous, you know, or envious of you. Yeah. And then you don't know until, like years into it I'm like oh they actually don't even want you to win yeah. you can't be you cannot be friends with people that are jealous of your life or jealous of you it just doesn't work mm-hmm. you gotta Agreed. pay attention because there's people there might be people in your circle that are like oh i'm so proud of you like this no they're low-key like hating on you and want to see you fail and yeah that's why you really gotta um pay attention mm. to who you're around because i've been there where i've had to cut people off i'm like ooh. You're it because there's like subliminal like jabs, you know, and it's like, oh, uh, was that a compliment or was that like something negative? And you'll your intuition will tell you when you're around. I'm big on energy, so it's like when you're in a circle of people that like, you know, you think are your friends or your acquaintances, especially in business. I learned that a lot this year, where like I met a lot of different people through the industry, connecting with different people, being introduced and. Um, there's people who are like, oh my God, you're so pretty. But then they're like talking shit about me behind my back Mm. or doing funny shit, you know? And it's like, that's where you really have to like, you know what? Um, you're not my type. You're not part of my tribe. Yeah. I've had to learn that. So you're still in real estate, right? Yeah. I'm in mortgage. Okay. So, um, what's the interest rate today? (laughs) I don't even know. Probably like sevens, but, um, I've, I came to the industry with such a bad taste in my mouth because everyone was like, let's fucking make money. Let's buy a Lamborghini. You know, who wants the next Ferrari? And I'm not that type of guy. You could tell I kind of look homeless, you know? So I don't really give a shit about things like that. I just want to be able to provide. That's really all I care about. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just, it kind of like ingrained in me like, oh yeah, we're in here to fucking make money that I took every opportunity that I could. And it was probably the most stressed out that had ever been because I was dealing with such shit people. And I can say that because I don't give a fuck to work with these people anymore. Yeah. But at the time, I was like, you know what? Like, I saw the, the dollar signs and I was like, you know, I'll just, I'll just grit my teeth and do it. You know, I just, I'll do that time after mm-hmm. time. And again, always a bad experience, right? Always. I felt like I was suffering working with these people. They made my right. life so fucking right. miserable. And only until like... I had a deal where it was the commission was like sixty thousand dollars or something. He said sixty. Yeah. Okay. Damn. And I said no. I said, "Sorry, I, 
I don't want to work with you. And this is after I had already been working with them for like months. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I, I don't want to work with you. Like, good luck. Find someone who's going to deal through shit because I'm not dealing through shit. Yeah. And I felt mm. so fucking relieved. Yeah. It was like the lightest I had felt in so long. And yeah. I can't, I actually did not know that it was taking a toll on me outside of work. Like, I would sleep and I would dream about this yeah. fucking deal falling yeah. apart because this guy was just fucking like, not yeah. on top of his it's shit. It's suffocating. It was. It was. Yeah. It, it bled into other aspects <clears throat> of my life, you know? And that's when I realized, like, oh, you know what? Like, I could, you know, fucking tough it out and mm -hmm. make that money. Like, it sounds fucking great, yeah. right? Like, one deal to make that much. But I'm not. I, that doesn't resonate with me as much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like making money is good, but loving the way you make money is even better. Absolutely. 100%. And I love that you said that because that's kind of how I felt about, you know, being in the fashion industry. Like I would hate going to work mm -hmm. when the traffic, everything which I hated about it, the toxicity of going back and forth with people, like always arguing with, it just wasn't for me anymore. I was fucking tired of it. I was tired of coming home telling my husband how much I hated my boss or we got into it today. Like, I felt like he knew them more than I knew them. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he was in it. He's like, damn, I feel like I'm actually in it. Like, I'm upset for you, you know? And it's like, I just didn't want to bring that energy in my home anymore. And it's like, what am I doing this for? Why am I going to work every day hating it for what? And, you know, your default answer is like, because you have a family, you need to provide. This is what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it goes back to my whole thing about love. It's like, if you're not doing what you love, why are you doing it? Right? And then I, you know, there's this like scripture that says like, you can't serve two masters, money or you know mm -hmm. are you serving money or are you serving god right what are you doing because it's like you just making money like your master you're getting up every day hating life crying coming home you're um not spending time with your kids you're just low vibrational mm -hmm. and that's when i'm like i'm fucking tired of this shit and then i got into it with my boss and slammed the door <laughs> and then she let me go oh that's the yeah the one that that's you what happened <laughs> that's what happened damn yeah it was it was no but like it was crazy. I remember that day. I kind of already knew it was coming, but we, you know, we got into it and she had found out that I was trying to become a realtor or something. Mm. And the company was like going down, people were leaving and she was just like, somebody told me that, you know, you're not really in it for the whole journey that you're trying to become a realtor. I'm like, um, I'm sorry that this is not my business. And, you know, I, I'm hearing that things are going down and people are leaving and you're laying people off like i'm just trying to get ahead of the game like i have a family to take care of like this is not my baby mm -hmm. so i gotta protect me and she just did not like that answer yeah and so i was like fire me today give me my unemployment and the next day she did that hmm. so i kind of have like maybe you'll disagree with me but slightly a hot take well i do agree you should love the thing that you're doing mm -hmm. I do think that you should at one point hate the thing that you're doing because I think that's where you get your grit from. Like you can't just hop into a dream job, the first job that you get, mm -hmm. right? That's, it's, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that Dave Chappelle like skit or stand up, I think, where he, he goes like, oh yeah, it's, it's so stupid when you get a job at places and they're like, why do you want to work at Baskin Robbins? <laughs> it's like, because I love ice cream. Bitch, I fucking need money. You know what I mean? Like, I, <laughs> you're you know just you're like, being real with it. Yeah. yeah, just being real with it, right? Yeah. Because at a certain point in your life, you're, you're going to have to take on these jobs that you don't like doing, right? Yeah. In order to survive, in order to like provide. Absolutely. But, you know, hopefully you get yourself into a better place where you can do what <clears> you love, right? And that's the struggle that, you know, shows that you actually really care about it, that you're willing to sacrifice all those things to get to where you are to do what yeah. you love to do. I mean, I'm glad you set that up for me because I didn't always love what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. It it took me a while to get there, okay? Like, I left a job that I didn't like at the time, you know? And I'm like, I'm going to be an inspirational speaker. I'm going to be motivated. I'm going to do, like, this is what I'm going to do for now, right? But mm -hmm. it's like, I didn't just quit my job and everything was all great, yeah. you know? I left my job. We had just bought a house. I got laid off, okay? Damn, that's tough. So my husband was like, you better go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we just bought a house. So I ended up having to kind of freelance and go back for what I was doing. It did just have, and then I got into it with more people and took another job and like left. I worked retail. Like, I was really trying to get out of it. I was like, God, please. Like, I don't want to like 
do this anymore. But when you're a parent and you got a mortgage to pay and you have an angry ass husband that's ready to like, you know, cut it off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to be like, you know, what? I have responsibilities as a mother to make sure my kids are straight, that our mortgage is fine. Those are that's when the adult is kicking in. Mm. So it's not like, hey, quit your job tomorrow and like become an entrepreneur and gung ho. And you know what I'm saying? It's it, that's not the journey. Like we've been through a lot of stuff for me to get to where I'm at today. Right. So financially. And I've never really had a good relationship with money. I filed for bankruptcy at 25 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. How was that? I mean, terrible, I'm sure. But like- shit, it was crazy. Like, I was literally like 22, like collectors calling my phone, like giving me the money. Like, and I didn't have nothing at the time. So I didn't care. Like, you can't repossess or take anything back. That's not mine. So like, yeah. whatever. But I ended up having to file for bankruptcy. And then, um, yeah, it's been crazy. So like. Money is something I've always feared. So it's just like, oh, no, I got to get back to work. I got to go back to freaking fashion and do what I do just for for this, you know. And each and every job I went at, I got into it with someone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, fuck, like, really, God? Like, is it me? Like, what's going And that's when I started going through the motions of, like, bettering myself, mm-hmm. doing the inner work, understanding my past and things like that. Um, it's not easy leaving something you're comfortable with it's also not easy it puts a strain on your marriage especially when your husband is a a nine to fiver i call him but it's not a bad thing but i mean like you know he's in that like state of like no we have to pay the bills Mm -hmm. like i need to go to work that's what we need to do i'm the dreamer so that's why i'm saying we're like yin and yang like he grounds me when i'm like got this new idea like he stops me before i completely jump off right Mm -hmm. so um there is times I'm like, fuck this. I'm like, why am I leaving a career that sustained me? Like, maybe it's me. Maybe I need to go back and really just chill out and not be in my ego so much. Right. And I tried that. It didn't work out. Like, it didn't mm-hmm. work out. You know, um, I will tell you a story, though. It's like during the pandemic. And this was kind of like the pivotal like moment where like, I'm not ever fucking going back. Mm. Um it was when was the pandemic 2020 2020 yeah okay so i got a really good job i was trying the whole real estate thing i probably sold one or two homes and my husband was like it's not cutting it like we can't do this we have bills to pay right so i went back to work i got a really great job at a big denim company in west hollywood Hmm. as a director of technical design this was around march you know And so I had to take the blue line to the red line and walk down Hollywood. Like I was like literally feeling like I was in New York again. And I remember taking the job and I was making like well over six figures. Mm -hmm. This was like for the money, right? Yeah. Obviously. And I remember sitting on the red line and I was like, please, God, if this is what you want for me, if you want me to go back and this is what I need to do and this is part of my journey, then I'm going to do it. I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. I'm going to receive everything. This is part of it, right? Mm. But please just let me work from home. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, please let me find a job where I could just be at home with my kids and I can do whatever the fuck I want and make my own schedule. Mm. I just knew that wasn't for me. So crazy story. Seven days into that new job, the pandemic hit. Like my VP came in and was like, Amber, well, you know what? The government's shutting down. You're going to be working from home. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you. Like, thank you, God, you know, because he listened to me because I literally was like crying on the red line, like, fuck, like at this shit again. I said I wasn't going to do this. Mm. And so after that, I, um, you know, tried working from home. I got into it with my VP. She was smoking a cigarette and she like cussed me out. And I was like, bitch, fuck you. Like, who are you talking to? Like, we're going through a pandemic. She wanted to furlough my entire team and have me do all this work. And I'm like, no, fuck that. I'm not doing that. So I left, got into some other shit, got into it that that I learned so much. Like I'm like now seeing like, you know what? I see what God's doing right now. 
because there's also this verse and i'm all being all biblical and stuff but mm-hmm. it's like, there's this verse like that i read that's like you may not know what i'm doing to you now but later you're gonna understand and so i in retrospect i'm like damn i see why i went through all these jobs and got into with all these people because i actually learned a lot from it mm. the last company that i was at which is kind of the way i run my business now for lava designs i was the director of product development there i seen the rise and fall i seen their books i seen how they do everything and i'm like shit like i just got into it with you but i'm like now having all this knowledge of how to run a business and so that's when it really like gets me like down i'm in for this this mm. is my journey so when i say that it wasn't always a love relationship it was a hate relationship because it was hard trying to figure it out you know it's still hard i'm still in the baby stages of trying to figure it out but um sometimes it's hate sometimes it's love but i know that's what i'm meant to do i'm mm-hmm. clear on that so i think that what's that's what makes it easier for me to keep going okay so i want to talk to you about compliments yeah right you're you're a woman who's gotten a lot of compliments right yeah. about physical attraction i'm assuming yeah I was raised to not compliment people about their physical looks, specifically women, because of the fear of them mistaking it for something else. Right. right? Even if I do think it in a platonic way. Yeah. So let's say like my friends, I want to compliment them, like my female friends, like, oh, you look nice today. I don't yeah. do that. I, I never do yeah. that. I never say, oh, you look cute today. Nothing like that. Yeah. I, I have a hard time even complimenting their outfit, right? And that's because, again, like I don't want them to mistake it as something else. Even women that I'm like attracted to, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of nuance to mm-hmm. that. Like It could be also that, because I, I, I don't mind doing it when I know that they're interested. Right. Because it's like, okay, I got the green light. I'm okay. Yeah. But to put myself out there, mm-hmm. I have a really big fear of that, to be honest. Why is that, though? Like, I, why, why do you think? I honestly... Because you said, I, like, I don't want it, them to mistake it for something else. Like, what is that something else? Like, if you're going to, like, see a friend, but you don't really see her like that, and you're like, oh, you know what? I really like what she's wearing, you know? Because you really do. Mm-hmm. You know, what if you really yeah. dig, like, what she's wearing and... You think that if you say that, she's going to be like, oh, yeah. like he likes me or something. Yeah. I think it's because it could be taken two ways, right? Like with my friends, it could be taken as flirtatious and I don't have that interest. So therefore, I would rather not say it. With someone that I'm interested in, it might be taken as platonic. So therefore, I don't say it in that way. You right. know, it's like double edged, I guess. Yeah. And to be honest, like just 100% transparent, maybe I'm just scared of. Mm-hmm. Of putting myself out there right there's that's also something else you know yeah. and that's probably why i'm okay with having them make advances first before yeah. i'm comfortable with saying something honestly i was telling you earlier like if you feel something for a girl right like tell her let her know because mm. because it's energy you'll know when you see somebody and she's feeling you because you'll feel that attraction instantly whether it's like physical attraction or you're having an emotional connection you're gonna know mm. right and you're not you're actually depriving yourself by not saying hey damn you look really good <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? you look good yeah like women want to hear that like i feel like it's kind of weird though because i get a little bit self-conscious when people are like oh my god you're so pretty i'm like uh, i don't know what to say i'm like oh thank you but it's awkward because i also came up in a household where we don't really compliment each other and it's awkward so i'm like oh okay thank you but i also want that because i didn't have that growing up mm-hmm. so i want like my man to be like tell me i'm beautiful you know tell me this i want to hear that women want to hear that and so when you're not telling us that we go through this rabbit hole of how come he never tells me like that I look good? Like what? He's not into me. He's not attracted to me nor like we women. Like that's why I tell your girl that she looks good. Like don't yeah. shy back, especially if you, you could feel the energy that I mean, telling my girl that is no problem. You yeah. know what I mean? Cause we're in that comfort zone. Where yeah. It's like, okay, you give me the okay to like tell you that. And yeah. that's, I think that's another thing that I kind of want to talk about is that I'm also raised around the time where, men are now labeled as creeps 
<laughs> yeah. If you say some shit, right? Yeah. So you could either, they could either take it yeah. really well and like be like, thank yeah. you, or like this guy's hand on me and he's a fucking creep, yeah. right? And that fear of being perceived as a creep. Yeah. And I think it's also because I've seen a lot of guys do that where it's like, yeah. oh, no, obviously you're just being a fucking creep. That's weird. Yeah. No, I, I know those kinds. Where yeah. I don't want to be grouped up with them. So yeah. therefore, I'm going to take the safe way and just not say anything. Uh, see, that, I get it. I totally get it. Um, it's funny because my husband, right, like, he's... I won't say he's a creep. <laughs> he's not a creep. But when we first started dating, like he would like give me this weird look or just say some like crazy shit, like, oh my God, like your eyes are like crazy beautiful. And I'm like, whoa, like what the fuck? That's weird. You know uh, what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, and that's what I'm saying is I, I think that's what you guys are fearful of is like, I don't want to say some dumb shit because she's going to think I'm a weirdo or she's not going to dig me. I don't want to mess it up. But it's like, I honestly believe like energy attracts energy, right? Mm -hmm. Just say it, go with it. Tell her like, if you just meet her somewhere and you're feeling her, like say what you want because you're either gonna get rejected or accepted. Mm -hmm. Rejection is protection, right? So just know that. Don't If she's not for you, then she's not for you. Move on, let it go, right? But I bet you the next girl you tell that to, she might welcome it and be like, oh, he's kind of weird, but I'm digging it, right? So I feel like you're depriving yourself when you don't, say how you feel you don't go on intuition if you do see somebody beautiful like say it you know you never know that might be your soulmate that might be your next wife yeah it's funny because actually a lot of times i want to say these things it's never with the intention to date at all it's just like i just want to give out like a compliment you yeah know? just being honest like this is what i think right now yeah. like oh shit like that shit looks fire or whatever yeah. you know what i mean like how do you feel when people compliment you oh awkward as fuck so exactly. awkward you know Same. extremely yeah. awkward it's like not even just physically but even in <laughs> yeah. just like my personality yeah. i feel awkward like you off yeah, camera like, she gave me some compliments yeah. about my personality and that shit made me you feel like froze up i was Did like you see? I you <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's true though and that's what i'm saying it's like I'm at this place in my life where like I'm big on energy. So when I feel something, I'm going to say it. Mm. You're either going to vibe with it or not. And I'm okay with that. I'm, yeah. I'm sure of myself when I say things. And I don't say it all the time, you know, when I feel that. So for me to like say it up front, it's the right time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's going gotcha. to be received. So before you, and whether or not it's like a platonic thing or, you know, someone you like, it's just... You never know what people are going through, first of all. Hmm. You might be their like saving grace that day by saying that. You know, I actually have thought that before, that in general, because I've definitely been on the receiving end of that where I'm like, wow, like I kind of had it like a shitty day and, and thank you for that. No? That's exactly why you should not hold back because you never know whose day you're going to make better by just saying that. Hmm. Um, like when I see people in the elevator and I was like, damn, that's a really nice dress you got on or that's your color that looks good and then people will be like oh my god thank you and yeah. it, like it really makes you feel good when someone out of the blue compliments you because mm. that's the energy that's the aura that you're putting off and it needs to be recognized what tells you when a person's giving you a compliment that they're being a creep or if what they're saying is creepy or if it's like just a compliment that you could take what's the difference I get a scared ass feeling like if you say something like, ooh, girl, like, oh, like you want to do some weird stuff. With oh, me. like the, ooh, you get that girl. scary feeling like, <laughs> uh, uh, like this is like a danger zone. Yeah. As a woman, I mean, you know, when a man is pushing up on you in a weird, like creep way, mm. you know, and I'm very I can like I said, I, I know that because I've been there, you know, but it's like to the guys that like do say things is like they're aware of my i don't know they feel my masculinity if i must say like they mm. know that like she ain't playing around because i always look mad so they're scared <laughs> to like compliment me and when they do it's like oh okay he's a real one because not too many people can do that because i always look like a bitch and i'm always mad right i make it really hard for people and that's why my husband's like that's why i liked you because you're fucking mean and oh. i want and the, you were like a challenge <laughs> um but yeah, it's crazy. It's it's all about like like energy, you know. Mm. It's like that's how I know when it's a creep. It's like you don't feel safe. Like this is not a safe compliment. Yeah. <laughs> like this is like I'm gonna watch my back when I go to the bathroom because this is not safe. Or watch my drink. Have you ever had uh, someone compliment you that 
straight up you felt yeah, not dude, safe like like what oh my god like i was in i was at magic for in vegas in my like streetwear years and we were at the venetian hotel and like there is this guy like you know just looking at me part of the group you know what i mean and he ended up following me up to my like hotel and i think he was like watching me and then he was at the elevator and he fucking pulled his pants down like he like exposed himself to me was he f- drunk or i don't drugs? fucking know but i'm saying like from the beginning i was like there's something not right about this guy like it's it was it was a creepy weird but he was like mm. around his like homies i think he was drunk and i'm like damn yeah i trust me i've been in a lot of like danger 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 <laughs> like yeah. you know what i mean like it's like crazy like i think also i've, I've seen some of my friends who are like terrible at flirting and mm-hmm. i'm like fuck dude i do not want to be like you you know <laughs> like i heard one of my friends say to this girl like yeah damn those thighs look like chicken thighs like i had to take a bite out of that yeah. and i was like god damn dude never fucking say that shit ever again. yeah yeah but at the same time it's like um you have to practice almost right because yeah. some people don't get me wrong. Some people are charismatic enough where yeah. it'll come off very natural and yeah. you won't feel that. Yeah. But some people are just practicing, learning how to talk yeah. to, you know, someone they're attracted to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But also having, I'm going to give you the scenario. Let's say someone's out there. They want to put themselves out there and they, they don't know how to flirt. They don't know how to give mm-hmm. out compliments and it takes up a lot of, courage for them to put themselves out there they have to muster yeah. strength to even talk even say hi yeah and then they get shut down okay. right yeah. let's say they get rejected because the first couple of times they're probably going right. to be awkward right they're more than likely to be inclined to never do it again right? can we try something i'm gonna try something sure i want you to compliment me and not in a, you know, like in a platonic way. Yeah, just put me on the spot like that. Like, huh? seriously, like, we're going to get over this fear today, okay. Peter. Like, <laughs> compliment me. No, dude, like, it's okay. Compliment it's, a, it's a safe you. space. Okay. <laughs> okay. It is a safe space. Yeah. Compliment you. Okay. Yeah. I like the Ellie hat. It's Thank nice. you. No, go Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> right see how was that it that was, was fucking weird that was weird <laughs> that was fucking weird i was like okay what can i say <laughs> i had to think of like 10 different things and like which ones to pick yeah. from you know but it's like it's weird as fuck but once you get yourself out of that com- it's like jumping off like you're scared to jump off something but you do it anyway because it's that adrenaline rush and now that it's done it's done you did it you know, I'm not saying go out there and start complimenting everyone, but yeah. it's like, damn, mama, shit, so, yeah. Fine. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm like, uh, <laughs> no, right? Um, it, it's a, it's a scary feeling, but it's like, again, you will attract like your tribe of people, like to be mm-hmm. yourself. Like that's important to be around people that are very much like you, but also very different mm. at the same time because it gets you out of your comfort zone. And mm. you learn that a lot in business, like. Yes, you want to attract clients and, you know, people that mesh with you because you identify, you trauma bond or whatever it is, but you're not elevating when you're stuck in that same, like, group of, like, thoughts or, like, ideas and feelings. (laughs) Well, you know, going back to what we were saying about, like, who you surround yourself by, I have groups of friends who go out and that's their goal, right? It's, like, to find a girl. (laughs) Like, all of them. Like, they'll go out and... Like a group of five, six guys. Like, all right, I don't go talk to this Single guys do though. Not all single guys do that, and that's the difference. Like, okay, so this is where I think my group is. If I was to do now, I think I'll be. Huh? If I was a guy and I was single, I'll be out doing that. Okay. See, (laughs) see, this is why I'm I'm listening to you now because I want to hear from your perspective. Like, me and my group of friends, especially the core group of friends, like we're very much, like, fuck it, let's not go out and like talk to girls. Let's get drunk and like fucking you know just chill like that's we're okay with that we don't want to be like the group of guys who go out there and they prey on women you know what i mean yeah, like yeah so it's almost like our way of justifying the way we are is by saying like we don't want to be like that but i'm sure there are tasteful ways of doing that also exactly right? i just haven't seen it like yeah. i've just we'll seen be guys the first you gotta huh? be the first <laughs> i gotta be Remember? the first <laughs> I mean, I see, and this is the problem that I have. I'm sure a lot of people have the same problem. Is like, I'll give out advice I'm not willing to take sometimes. Yeah. Like, I've told some of my friends who are in that same group of guys that are like, yeah, it's fuck it, dude. Like, we don't have to be, like, dogs and go out and fucking, like, search for women. Like, we just have fun, hang out within our fucking squad, right? Yeah, yeah. 
and I've told them like, hey, like, are you are you like not open to dating you? I'm like, oh, you know, like I'm just chilling with my boys. It's all good. And I was like, oh, maybe just maybe not be the the aggressor, but like allow it to happen if it were to happen. Mm -hmm. And now they're in relationships, right? All of my friends are in relationships. Yeah. I'm I'm like the odd one out now. Yeah. To where like again, I gave them that advice, and I'm yeah. not willing to take my own advice. Right. But. You know, it's like I could ha I could have so many reasons to justify why I am the way I am, but I know deep down inside, when I feel that whether you call it excitement or fear, that like I want to explore that. I'm and working you, on and it. you did today. Yeah, you did today. See? Good job. Progress. A little <laughs> progress. Bit of progress. Yeah. You know, um, no, I, I love that. That's that's a very hard thing to talk about as a man. Like a lot mm -hmm. of men, like won't ever admit that, but. I mean, at least coming from a female's perspective, like, I get it, you know, especially if this girl is, like, someone you really like or maybe just a friend and you just want to, like, compliment her. Like, you don't want people getting the wrong idea. I think there's this misconception that compliments are a form of, like, flattery and, like, I like you or whatever. It could be just be like, hey, I really like that hat, LA hat you got going on. <laughs> cool. Why? Because we might have similarities, yeah. you know, but I don't think of it that way when people compliment me. That's what I'm saying. I can distinguish the creeper between the, you know, the real. But it's like, I get it. It's and that that me something that you got going on with you mm. inside. Like, why do you feel awkward, or why do you? F why don't you want to be like them? Like, who are them? Like, maybe it's like you'd start digging deep. Like, why am I like so triggered? Like, what happened to me when I was a kid to where? <sighs> That is such a negative thing yeah. to compliment and then feel like you're being a creep. Like, have you gone through something that like? I think what it is is I have a lot of female friends, yeah. and they'll tell me shit like that. Like, this guy's being such a creep, or men are all dogs, or men are trash. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, fuck, I really don't want to be grouped into that pack, right? And I've done it where like I've I've seen it personally from like newer female friends where they're like, oh, I fucking hate when guys do this or that, mm -hmm. and. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I won't do that, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be, to take one less guy out of the creep group, you know? Yeah, well, and there's like, takes two to tango. Like, that's another thing too with women, you know, and I will mm. say this, like, we, that's how we bond. We talk shit about our dudes. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, oh, he did this yeah. today. Like, he made me take out, like, it's just something that women do, right? It's like the, the banter, the back and forth between women, but like, we're not holding ourselves accountable either. Mm. You know, I feel like you have an accountability when you're out in the dating scene or you're in a marriage or you're around certain people to where you might be making somebody feel uncomfortable or like you're probably not being open with that person or you're constantly like negative talking your boys and it's like starting to become this like negative banter of like oh i hate this guy i don't this mm -hmm. guy irritates me and those are you got to set your boundaries with your homegirls you know because one thing i do know and i'm not judging you but have you been that guy that you're all your like female friends go to to like talk shit about their boys or like their problems i have in the past not yeah. so much more as okay. of lately because i i just don't have the energy to just fucking exactly. listen to that shit you know, and I think that that's why who you surround yourself really makes a big difference. But the reason why I asked you that is because those type of women that do that are like, those are the danger zone. Like, you got to watch out for those <laughs> because they're too focused on what they're not getting. It's like, you have to really be accountable and be like, why do you feel that way? Why do you feel like your significant other or your husband isn't making you happy? Or like, you have to find that inner piece of like why does when he does this why does it make me angry mm. or why do i feel like he's a freaking a-hole on this day or this particular time like what is it about that that's pissing you off so damn much that you gotta go tell your homie or tell your friend and, and dump your trash on people those are the people that are very low vibrational people that are unhappy that don't want to make change mm -hmm. that aren't being accountable for their shit so they dump it on other people and blame other people like it's like a blame game mm -hmm. and those are the people you want to stay away from because those are the those are the scary ones those are the ones that haven't figured it out mm -hmm. when i say figured it out like you got to look deep within yourself to ask yourself, why are you so pissed off? Because you have the opportunity to like change your situation. You know, all my childhood traumas that I went to, like I was sick and tired of getting mad, 
getting angry, taking it out on my husband, talking shit to my homegirls. It was such a like negative thing. Like I'm sick and tired of being this person. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be happy. Like I want to have fun and like thrive, not like talk shit about my husband or your other relationships. And so I stay away. Like I keep those type of conversations because sometimes you need guy talk, girl talk. That's just a part of it. But everything you do in moderation, like don't, don't let yourself get too involved in it. Yeah, I've definitely seen that. That's why I kind of got out of that because it just seemed like all they cared about was the cheese me, you know? Like they yeah. just want some tea, gossip, and don't get me wrong, sometimes like it's entertaining. To me, it's like entertaining. I'm, yeah. I'm rarely ever invested. Yeah. I rarely care that much. Yeah. But it's like when you make your life fully about that, yeah. then I'm like, oh shit, like I can't really be around you that much. Yeah. You know, because there's what else do you have to offer at that point? Yeah. So you mentioned like you were like not dating right now. Uh, yeah. Right. Sorry, I put you on. <laughs> yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, put me on blast. He's so not fine. available, people. Just letting you know. No. Um, mm. I really think that that's a really great thing to say and be confident about it. Because some people mm. will say like, uh, I'm not really like dating right, but you said it with like conviction. Like, I'm not really dating right now. I'm just yeah. trying to do me, and it's like. That's a really good thing um, to have because it's like you're sure of yourself. Mm-hmm. You you got boundaries. You've done the work. Like I know this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he has control. Like he, and that's what I'm saying. It's like as you start getting older and you start going, when you go through really fucked up shit, the boundaries start popping up. Or like, nope, that's not okay for me. Yeah. Nope, I'm not gonna call you back. Nope, I'm gonna let you go because you're not good for my peace. Nope, I need a break. Um, cause I used to be a people pleaser, like, you know, mm. yes, 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 I'll do it. And now it's like, no, I'm not having this conversation with you. I just want to say sp- special, special thank you to Amber Ashley getting me out of my comfort zone right now, <laughs> putting me on the spotlight the entire well, time. Well, you got me on my comfort zone. So thank you. Of course. Of course. Can you let the audience know where to find you? Yeah, so you can find me on um, Instagram at Ashley underscore Ambers on Instagram. And then my website is LavaDesignAgency.com. So if you're trying to start a clothing brand, it needs some business consultation, you need to sell a house, buy a house, I'm your girl. Hit me up. And I want to say a special thank you to our audience for making it through the whole podcast. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment below what you guys want us to talk about next time. And remember, live fast, eat. <laughs> live fast. Live fast. Eat. Eat fast. <laughs> <laughs>